Hey everyone, I'm John. Welcome to today's virtual classroom where I want to talk to you about the Eastern Oyster. So when oysters start off their lives, there's actually a brief part of their life where they are mobile, uh, where they can swim around and then they're going to come to the bottom of the water column and attach to something hopefully solid, either a rock or ideally another oyster shell. Once that oyster attaches, that's where it's going to spend the rest of its life. So if you can't travel around, how do you find your food? Oysters rely on current to bring them their food, and you may have heard them referred to as filter feeders because oysters eat things that are in the water, mostly plankton. So if you think of plankton as those small organisms that might make the Chesapeake Bay look green or brown, when an oyster eats, what it will do is it will open up its shells just a bit, draw some water in, eat that plankton, and then release water, which is now been cleared. Uh, it's estimated that an adult oyster can filter about 50 gallons of water in a single day. So you may be familiar with a coral reef like you'd find in the ocean. Well in the Chesapeake Bay we have oyster reefs. Oyster reefs are really important because they provide habitat and hiding places for other organisms. So not only are the oysters filtering the water, but you'll find mussels and snails attached to the shells. You'll find small fish and crabs coming in and out of those reefs. So they help stabilize the bottom of the bay and they provide places for other organisms to help them survive. So an oyster is a bivalve, meaning they have two shells. So I'm holding just one side of the oyster in my hand here. And this is a pretty good size oyster that you might get in a restaurant nowadays. Uh, if you want to compare that to our fossilized oyster here. This is actually one, two, three giant oysters attached to each other. This is how large you may have been finding oysters in the days of the Native Americans and the early colonists. And interesting on this one, you can see a marker where a spat or a juvenile oyster attached to one of these shells and this is where it was going to start growing. So we've set up an experiment here where we're going to leave our oysters in this tank filled with plankton in the water to allow them to eat. Uh, and we're going to film a time lapse so hopefully you can see that process happen. Oysters aren't always the most exciting thing to see, but they play a crucial role in the health of the bay. That clear water is going to allow sunlight to reach the bottom, which allows plants to grow. So they're influencing how many plants can grow in an area, what other organisms can be living in there. Uh, if you talk about restoring the health of the Chesapeake Bay, it's hard to imagine doing that unless you're starting with the oysters. That's going to wrap things up for today's virtual classroom. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you check out some more of our videos on our YouTube channel or on our website here on Sultana's virtual classroom.